It's one of the great Italian movies by one of the greatest Italian, even European directors. It's the 1957 movie Knights of Cabiria, directed by the famous Federico Fellini. Let's talk about why this movie is great, why it's in top 100 list, top 200 list of movies ever made, and why I think it's one of Fellini's best, coming up next. <laughs> Knights of Kiberia is, by my count, Fellini's sixth movie. Knights of Kiberia pairs well with the 1954 movie La Strada. It stars the same actress, Giulietta Messina, who for Knights of Kiberia won a Best Actress Award at the Cannes Film Festival. And she's just a wonderful actress. She plays in this movie a woman who is beat up, who has nothing going for her in the world, and she encounters different people each night that we see her in this movie. The title Knights of Kiberia first refers to her and her name. Second, the succession of knights that you see in this movie. I think it's four or five successive nights where you see this woman going out and the secret is she's a prostitute. Prostitution is illegal in 1950s Italy, and this movie takes place in Rome. And it turns out, well, you know, a lot of viewers just don't even pick up on the prostitution, even though it's overt in this movie. There are no sex scenes, but you do clearly see her going out to the street corners and trying to pick up men, more or less. The opening scene of this movie just grips me. We see her, we see extreme long shots of her, actually, with a boyfriend with a pimp. It's unclear at first who this guy is. They seem to be in love, but pretty quickly, he dumps her, he throws her in a river to drown, and then steals her purse. Of course, this announces one of the major themes of this movie. Also was in La Strada. It's why La Strada pairs so well with Knights of Kiberia, which is that men are cruel and harsh to women. I know that's a very generic theme, but you know, in the 1950s, this is pre-feminism. This topic comes up very strongly here because basically the man nearly murders the woman at the beginning of the movie. She doesn't have a great life. She's not tied into any family or church structure. And that's one of the main problems of this movie. The drifter, the loner, the isolated person in society. A theme, of course, that great movies hit hard on. You know, Michelangelo Antonioni is going to hit on this a lot in the 1960s and 1970s. And Fellini does too, of course, in his work. You see Kabiria encounter various men in this movie. On the first night she's out, she's taken up or picked up by a very famous movie director. She's taken to his mansion, she's shown around, and it's sort of a dream world for her. And that, in fact, is one of the things that comes up in this movie. Basically, each night she goes out, she has a new dream man enter her life. On another night, for example, she becomes part of a magic show and part of the illusion of the stage. This results in another night where a fan, a person who was at that magic show, wants to go see her, wants to go declare his love for her, and eventually, this is a little bit of a spoiler, they get married. The question is, do men fulfill Kiberia? Is this what Kiberia needs? And is there any social structure, any little society that can help Kiberia the prostitute out? On another night, she encounters a Marian revival, that is a Catholic church revival, where people are weeping and wailing about the Virgin Mary. And Kiberia seems to commit herself, at least in a slight way, to the Virgin Mary, at least very briefly. So by my count, that's one, movies, two, the church, three, magic shows or illusions, and four, an avid fan. So these nights all come in succession, and each of these encounters results in, you know, her not plying her trade. This prostitute encounters a succession of men who might be able to give her something of value, something that can give her an identity, but each of these men or each of these encounters are in a way rejected or don't end all that well. The movie throws a lot of sympathy, of course, in the way of the main character, this down and out girl who is doing something illegal and is yet the star of this movie. You know, the literature of prostitutes is long and storied, pun intended. And what I'm familiar with is 19th century stories about prostitutes, fallen women, and as that century goes along, you know, there's more and more sympathy by novelists, by artists especially, 
thrown the way of these down and out women who become prostitutes, which I think is totally reasonable and I don't think this movie is promoting prostitution at all. It's on Kabiria's side. She's a charming woman and this performance by Messina, you know, I think she copied a lot from Charlie Chaplin that comes across in La Strada quite heavily. Here she sort of borrows a little bit from Chaplin, but basically makes this character into her own invention. It's a wonderful performance. This is one of the reasons you really want to watch this movie. This movie also borrows not just from, say, Emile Zola, from French literature, but also, you know, I think from the Arabian Nights, one of the most famous books ever, certainly for Europeans for, at this point in 1957 for the last 130 years or so. And the Arabian Nights, you know, has a structure of telling one tale each night in order to woo or to give the illusion, or actually in the case of the Arabian Nights in general, the overall framework, to keep a prince or king from executing people. And so in this movie, you get a separate tale for each night where Kabiria goes out. She's in this dream world for a little while with these encounters with different people, and then she comes back to her ordinary life. This movie is built on circular structures where she goes out and comes back, goes out and comes back to the same street corner at night, seeing the same women ply their trade on the same street corner, going out and coming back. And you see that with the overall structure of this movie, where you have the beginning encounter, horrible one, where her boyfriend or pimp throws her into the river. And then, spoiler alert, slightly, well, it's good for you to know this, this is a threat to happen once again at the end of the movie. This movie raises some questions. What does a woman in the modern urban world need to fulfill her life? Second, what is the fundamental nature of the relationship between men and women overall? Are there major differences? No differences. These are obviously huge questions. Of course, in the literature of, say, the Catholic Church, Eve is blamed for original sin. Yes, Adam is part of that too, but you get a lot of woman blame in that sort of talk about what original sin or where it came from. And this movie reverses that with Kabiria having these encounters with men more or less who ditch her or who don't help her out at least. But does she need anybody to help her out or can she be self-sufficient? I think the movie is ambivalent about this possibility. And like a lot of Italian neorealist movies, you know, this movie is part neorealist. It's worried about the lower classes, how they're gonna make it in life, how they're gonna deal with various problems in the society in which they live. And then how you, the viewer, of course, are sympathetic to them and you might want to change your life given what you've seen on screen. I don't find that Fellini is that into realism, in fact, as I'm indicating here. He's into dreams and illusions and showing you that's what film is, that's what life is, that's what thinking or rationality is. It's actually an illusion versus, you know, realism itself. So the questions of feminism, the questions of what are illusions, the questions of what does an individual need in life to make themselves feel happy, all of these come up in this wonderful, interesting, provocative work. I'm hit or miss on Fellini. I actually don't like a lot of Fellini movies that people recommend, but this is one of a couple that I really appreciate, and so I recommend it highly to you. Go seek it out, Knights of Kiberia. Have you seen this movie? What do you think of it? Please let us know in the comments. Please subscribe to this channel for more great movie content as well and more great recommendations. Thank you very much. Have a great day.